Well, hello everyone, it's Carrie. I hope you're doing great. In today's video, I'm working on a Costa Fierce Monster, Monster High doll, and I'm making her into an Absinthe Fairy. This doll was intended to be a partner to a purple doll that I made for the Entity Doll Show at the Penumbra Gallery in Portugal back in May. And I didn't make a video for that one, so if you'd like to see her, check her out on my Instagram page for some photos. But this one was very similar to that look, so I intended to include her as a second entry to that show, but I got a little behind with some commissions. So I just entered the one doll and this one sold separately. So this one is actually sold at the time I'm making this video. So like I said, I used a Cast of Fierce base and I wanted to soften up the features, so I did some carving. I'm often asked by my patrons to show them a, some step-by-step uh, -step on how I do some carving, and I will do that eventually. I'm just still in the learning stages myself, and uh, but a couple of tips I can give is here I'm using a Dremel to sand it down, and that works okay on some of the areas that are... Uh, pretty thick like if you use it on the chin um, you have to use it on the very lowest speed if you use it on a higher speed you're gonna do some damage <laughs> so this it, it's a little rough for a uh, monster high doll so um, but another couple of tips is uh, just you have to use a very fine sandpaper and just sand and sand and sand and sand to get that smooth surface after you've carved so there I've softened up her ridge of her nose. I kind of gave her more of a uh, swoop nose and then uh, toned down her lip a little bit and her chin. I rooted her with this yarn. I believe this yarn is uh, synthetic. I usually use a wool or a uh, alpaca, but this one was a synthetic yarn. I think it was like acrylic maybe. And I used some, uh, I did some, it, my mixed media technique on the face, and this is similar to the ones that I did for my uh, fairy line or my uh, laboratory escape line, which is a couple videos back. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. There are still two dolls available out, out of that five doll set, and those are in my Etsy shop. So check the link below if you're interested in any of those. So here I'm using my pan pastels for some shading and the supplies that I use are in the description box below. There's a link to my Amazon shop and if you make any purchases from there I do get a small commission but it's really neat how that's set up. I think I've mentioned it before where I can go in and, and add the supplies that I use and a little bit of information on how I use them. So I do need to go in, in there and update it. Uh, it has been a, about a year or so I believe since I've updated that so I've I usually change the supplies that I use quite a bit. So I'll get that updated. So I wanted to kind of change the skin tone of this uh, Casta Fierce. The green, I wanted to add a little bit more uh, of a like lime green coloring to make it more like toxic looking or more like the absinthe bottle. If you're not familiar with the absinthe fairy, it's supposedly in the absinthe, the, the, the core that there's uh, a fairy that lives inside <laughs> that wants to steal your soul or something like that. Um, but I've always wanted to do this green fairy that lives in the absinthe. So like I said, I just uh, wanted to give her a more toxic looking color, more uh, like lime green or uh, maybe like less of a, less of an apple green and more of a lime green, I guess. So I'm just using a bunch of different green colors and gold and yellows to achieve these shades. And I don't think I knew what I was going to do with the lips until I got started and I was just kind of trying out some colors here and building those up. 
So I started out with this sort of ochre, yellow ochre color. And then I'm going in with, this is a Derwent Metallic. The Derwent Metallics are similar to Ink Tents, the Derwent Ink Tents. So they don't blend well with uh, watercolor pencils, but they do blend well with each other. And just continuing with the shading. While I'm doing that, I'll mention this week the Doll Artist Collective show uh, called Masquerade Ball is going on on Instagram. And the Doll Artist Collective is a group of artists on Instagram who come together to have doll shows and tons of great other stuff like sharing tips, featuring other doll artists, having an artist spotlight monthly. So if you haven't yet checked that out, um, the Doll Artists Collective. It's called at the Doll Artists Collective on Instagram, and I'll put that in the description box below as well. Um, like I said, the first show is Masquerade Ball. It's going on right now, and there are some amazing dolls to see there, and all of them are available for purchase, and they're selling out kind of fast, so go check that out if you're interested in seeing what's up there. So I want to thank everyone who has taken a look at my classes on Skillshare. I have a doll hair rerouting with yarn class and a face-up class. Both are for beginners, and if you sign up through the link in the description box below, you can get a f uh, two free months of Skillshare with no obligation. And I'm working on my third class, like as we speak today, which will be more interme intermediate techniques. So that'll be up soon as well. So thank you for everyone who has gone in and taken those classes or signed up for the two free months um, that's uh, given me encouragement to keep going and put some new classes out there so I appreciate that oh and finally I want to thank you uh, to all my patrons who are not only a huge support for me and the work I do but also have been a ton of fun to get to know and collaborate with like in our group challenges if you haven't yet check out my previous video where several of my patrons and I collaborated on a theme called monster mash so there were some really fun, exciting dolls. It's always fun to do these challenges in Patreon because we each have like our own take on the theme and then we put them together in a group photo and share it on Instagram and in that video. And it's just a lot of fun to kind of share in progress photos on, along the way. We have a, <clears throat> excuse me, a, um, an exclusive Facebook page where we kind of share uh, tips as we go and um, and everybody's been getting to know each other. So it's been a lot of fun. So if you're interested in participating or uh, joining my Patreon, patron, Patreon page, which also has a lot of tutorials, demos, and step-by-step -step, uh, videos, uh, check that out in the description box below. So now I'm doing some body blushing. I wanted to share how I did the, this. I also did some of the mixed media techniques along her body. And then I went and uh, did a lot of shading with mainly just yellow because it kind of toned down that, or kind of brightened up the skin tone to go with what I did on the face. Made it uh, more olives and uh, I keep wanting to say lime green, but I'm not sure if that's the green that I, that, that I really mean. Just more um, 
push towards yellow than blue as far as the green. And then I'm going back with more olive greens and shading the areas that would be darker. So those of you who do um, custom dolls, tell me in the description box or the comment section below, do you do body blushing in detail or do you mainly just do the face? Let me know. I usually spend a lot of time doing the extra work on the body and then covering up with clothes so it really doesn't make that much of a difference. <laughs> So now I'm just going back in with highlights and adding the white watercolor pencil to like the philtrum and upper lip and around the corners of the eyes. I do go back in and blend it out with a Q-tips uh, to avoid super harsh lines. And then I'm adding some line detail to the lips. My apologies for the angle of the camera. I keep getting my glasses and my hair in the photo. <laughs> so once I'm happy with her, I do the the white dots on the in the eyes to give her the highlight look. And then I gloss the eyes and on her I believe I left the lips matte. Sometimes I'll gloss the lips. And then I adhere eyelashes. If you're interested in uh, finding out how I adhere eyelashes, I do have a video from a while back that I did uh, showing the process of adhering uh, eyelashes. And those should be in, the, in my playlist. So check out my playlist. I have it organized uh, according to um, like a tutorial playlist, I believe. So let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all are staying well. Take care. Um, also, uh, stay tuned to the end. There's some final photo videos or final photos. And um, I guess here I didn't mention I'm going back in and doing some... Uh, doing a technique with some stamping or a uh, stencil and I forgot that I'd filmed that. <laughs> so thank you again for watching. I hope you have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.